And it's a simple lecture following basically two uh, sets. The first half of the term is studying an existing operating system so that you know an existing operating system basically implements all the features that you know sort of any operating system would implement in the 1970s. Uh, and, you know, make sure that you understand that part, and then we'll use research papers sort of to get up to speed from 1975 to 2011 or 12. Okay. The uh, other part, which is probably uh, I think you know, the most enjoyable and the most uh, interesting part, is the labs. Uh, you're going to build your own operating system. So the way to think about it is we're we going to say like here is a PC, x86 PC, and you're going to make it do something useful. In fact, you're going to basically make it implement uh, something that looks like, and smells from the outside like a very, very simple Unix system. Okay. And it's going to be in six, you know, there are seven labs, and you're going to go from, you know, build up, you start up with boot, and then all the way up until you can actually run some applications. And so you want to boot a, a little demo here about how exciting it's going to be when you're done. <laughs> well, that's not, not interesting, but. So we're going to mostly use uh, QMU, which is an uh, emulator that emulates a PC platform. And in fact, you, know, you can basically run this also on real hardware, but we can mostly use a simulator, so it makes the development for you a lot easier. And so, okay. Is everybody ready? <laughs> So at the end of this semester, that will be printed on the console, right? And we got a, a prompt. You know, this is the UI. The UI is going to have no windows, uh, no mouse. The only thing you're going to have is a keyboard and, and a TTY, a terminal. Now, so this is definitely back to the 70s. Uh, and, uh, does anybody You'll be really excited when you actually get to this point? Yeah, okay. So I'm going to type ls. <laughs> the most exciting you know, thing you're going to do in this semester is you're going to type ls, and it's going to print the contents of your process. <laughs> You're going to be, this sounds incredibly stupid, but you're going to be very excited and actually you're going to uh, achieve that goal. Even though you can just walk over to FINA and type LS in. You know, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right? So we'll, we'll, we'll look a little bit more at it. But basically what's going to look like, you know, it's going to be like a Unix, sort of a little operating system that you know, implements sort of basic Unix abstracting processes, you know, some virtual memory. Uh, you're going to do the file system. You're going to sort of, uh, write a network driver. So, you know, it's sort of a usual complete operating system. Uh, and then in the final project, you can do whatever you want. You know, so you can extend it in interesting ways. Uh, and, you know, turn your operating system into your ideal operating system uh, so you can use it in your daily life. <laughs> uh, and so, you know, people, what do people do with final projects? Well, they, you know, they implement a window system. Uh, a simple window system, typically. Uh, but like the more middle thing, uh, another popular theme is games. We have no games that you have to write in the first six laps, but Every year, you know, there's a good fraction of the class that thinks that you can't have an operating system without games, <laughs> and so they're spending quite a bit, you know, writing Pac-Man, so you know the things scroll full on the screen, and you need to know a lot about, you know, TTYs and stuff like that. So it'll turn out that even the simplest game is like actually a bit of work to get them running. Um, the so there's going to be so, so seven laps. Um, yeah. Um, there's a couple of things, other things that are going to be deliverables. Uh, we would lecture, so we typically have homeworks. Uh, and the homeworks are mostly uh, there to help you prepare for class. Uh, and uh, I know you're always very busy, you know, taking many classes. And uh, you know, when we're writing, a, for example, when you sign a paper, we often assign a homework question along with the paper so to force you to think about the paper. Uh, and um, uh, and so they're mostly there for you, uh, and we mostly we just check them off. We, we actually don't grade them. Uh, we tell them what the answer is for course in lecture, but you know we're not going to. Uh, they're really there to help you, uh, you know, get into the paper. Sometimes these papers are very complex, right? Like 14 pages of dense text, and you know where to begin, like the end, middle, like what is that the point? And so one question here, while you're reading, can help sort of getting you into the paper. Now, so that's the homeworks. And there are going to be a couple of smaller homeworks in the beginning that are mostly sort of poking at different Unix systems to understand like, to what they're doing. Um, the, uh, another thing that's associated with the labs, uh, we're going to actually do, you're going to do, uh, code reviews. Uh, it's going to be lightweight, uh, and so the, uh, you're going to submit your lab, like say you submit lab one, and then within 36 hours, 36 hours after that, you know, we can tell you, well, you got to review, review somebody else's lab one solution. 
uh, you know, write a couple paragraphs saying, like, here's some ideas I could make the software better, or here's some big bugs that you know our test case is missed, uh, and you know, and some statement about what you learned about. It. So we're going to be looking at each other's code, and this is standard industry practice, and so this seems like a good thing you know, for you to do. And this is an experiment for A2A. We have never done this before, uh, but you know we're. And we're sometimes we look at your code and we're like, this is really horrible quality code. <laughs> <laughs> sometimes we look at it and say, oh, God, it's beautiful, better than my code. You know, both, both cases happen. Uh, and, and, uh, it's good for you, you know, to learn uh, and you know, follow that process. And so we randomly, it's double blind, you know, randomly assign things. And if you have suggestions about how to make that better, you know, let us know. Uh, but you should uh, count on that you can do some code review. Uh, and hopefully that will help you basically writing better code. That's the end goal of the code review. Um, oh, and not doing that. Quizzes. Everybody hates them? I just like making them. Uh, <laughs> take a lot of time. Uh, but they're worth all doing. There are going to be two, one in midterm, which basically covers the first half of the semester when we're studying the, like this operating system to get you to the 9075 range. Uh, basically, it's going to be a booklet of source code. Uh, this, this is XV6 that we're going to be studying in the lectures. Uh, so, lectures are XV6 and uh, papers. So the first half of the term is XV6. Uh, I'll explain that in a second. Uh, but basically, that is a minimal operating system, not 12 million lines of code. Uh, that, uh, you know, we wrote, and you know, we're going to go through it just to help you teach exactly. You know, what does an operating system look, you know, in the inside, while at the same time you're writing your own. And so that will help you hopefully a lot with actually writing your own. And the also runs on the x86. In fact, it looks very similar. <laughs> in the end, we can also type ls, and you see the same files, except the internal structure of the operating system is completely different. You know, one is a monolithic system, the other is in what we call an exokernel system. In fact, so you see also two different styles of sort of designing an operating system. Uh, and so one of the, you know, maybe, uh, maybe slightly, uh, you know, surprised about how this might work, we're going to actually just basically read code in class. You know, so we're going to you know, look at C code and, you know, just go through it. So what happens in line, you know, 12 and the 22, you know, we're setting some bid and some register. Oh, what does that do? And we're going to get all excited about it. Uh, <laughs> and this sounds really weird, but, you know, it works, seems to work really well. So. Uh, and so you're going to be encouraged. I'm going to encourage you, actually, you know, to basically read this. You know, by the time the quiz comes along, quiz one, you know, you're going to be, you know, you read this code as a book. You know, you just go back, flip four, back and four pages. You're just like, oh yeah, this is this, this and that and the other, and et cetera, et cetera. And, uh, you know, we of course try to write it in a beautiful style so that you know you can enjoy also the coding style. But uh, <laughs> you know, you think about it now, you should be able to understand every line of code in this booklet uh, by halfway of the semester. All right. And that will be help you tremendously no matter what. I mean, you're going to look at any operating system that's going to have similar structure that we're, you know, that's going to be in, the, in this, in, in this text. Uh, this year, we also actually provide you with a text that we wrote to basically explain what this code does. And so, you know, if you miss lecture, I hope you don't. But you know, if you do, you, know, you can look at the text and read it. Yeah. So I just that available in copy. There, right in this box. No, I'm going to give you a copy. Uh, okay. And so, yeah, bring them to a class uh, so that we, you know, we're going to you know, look at the code on the screen, but you know, it can help happens that you can make notes and stuff like that. Okay. Um, okay, the lab development is to, uh, it's going to be, sort of, this is all standard Unix, you know, GCC, make, uh, you know, normal uh, tools, Git, uh, all the kind of sort of standard software development. It's going to run on the x86. Uh, so a bunch of extra students, what they always do at the end of the semester, uh, you know, they have their operating system running in QMU, but they want to see it run in the real hardware. And, and so they will fix some stuff up and, for example, run it in their laptop, and, uh, and that's in principle possible. Uh, although, you know, you will find during semester you won't do it because it's a pain in the neck to actually run in the real hardware, booting takes long, and while in QMU you can actually, you know, modify QMU if you want to and actually look at the inside what actually happens and sort of track down the box. Um, we're going to provide you the way we create the labs is to uh, is we're going to we basically provide you the test cases up front, and you use like make I mean whatever make lab one, and you know that will run the test cases for you, and you know you have to uh, you can work on it 
And we're going to not use any other tests. So by the time, you know, and we'll say like, oh, you got like 100 out of 100 if you did a great job. Uh, and then, you know, we will submit, you know, that to the uh, website. Okay, so you know exactly, you know, where, how good your labs are. Now, there's a very important point. The fact that you get 100 out of 100 out of tests, which almost everybody of you are going to succeed in doing, doesn't mean that your code works. <laughs> uh, we're we're you know, testing some subset. We do a good job, we try a good job to, uh, you can look at the tests, you know, they try to do reasonable, comprehensive, you know, test a lot of corner cases. But it's usually amazing what kind of bucks you can make. And so we're, <laughs> we're not set up, you know, to actually uh, track down them all. And so you should never, never believe, and this is an important point, that like when you do lap two or lap three, that your previous laps are correct. <laughs> Uh, and since they're all built on top of each other, you know, it is not uncommon that you know you get a lap three. It's like, yeah, it doesn't work. You know, triple falls, like it doesn't do anything. And you know, I changed one line. You know, how could it be? And it turns out, well, in lap two, you you know had a wild pointer that you know you didn't discover it was never an issue, but now it is. And so you will be experts at debugging uh, <laughs> at the end of the semester. Uh, but the first starting point is just really never believe that anything is correct. Uh, I think this is, a, this is true. This is a general good lesson to be learned because computers basically don't work. They have errors, faults, nothing works really correctly. And anything correct that comes out is more like, I, know, I generally consider that sort of a good fortune uh, because you really look carefully at code. It's just always little bit bugs. All right. This is one reason that there's so many security holes. We just can't write correct code. Uh, okay, any questions about this? This is sort of the, I guess, the logistics of the class. This is all crystal clear. Good, good. Oh, the other most important thing I forgot to mention: we got two TAs. <laughs> They're good at debugging. <laughs> <laughs> they have seen many, many bugs. <laughs> and they're right here. So Austin and Hagan, uh, both have done all the laps many, many times over, <laughs> and we'll post office hours and all that stuff. And now, the idea is, of course, that you do it on your own, and, you know, we're not going to, the TAs are, are instructed by, you know, the, your esteemed staff not to write the code for you, uh, but, you know, guide you along. Uh, so in the end, you've got to discover your own box, repair them yourself. But if you get stuck, you know, you should, you know, really get stuck, you should you know, talk to the TAs. Okay? The, 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 the class is a 12-unit class. Uh, and, and the labs are sort of designed to take somewhere between whatever, six and eight, nine hours a week. I uh, heard the rest of these lectures and all that kind of stuff. And so if you're suddenly spending two hours in the lab, you're making no forward progress, you know, maybe start time to think about, you know, talking to the TAs to help you a little bit along so that you're not like spending 20 hours on the lab. Now some of you might spend in the beginning 20 hours on the labs because, you know, you're back, you know, you're, you're, your double O four background or assembly programming background sort of dropped a little bit where you don't really know C, uh, but we try to help you along. Right? And so if you're, you know, really uh, spending an extraordinary amount of time on the lot, you should tell us and we'll try to help you because that's not our goal. It should be 12 units in the end. Although I must admit that there are other easier ways of getting 12 units than taking six, eight, two units. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so let me uh, hand out 